Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite girl, online careful lobby in the building. If you are new to my channel, I'm a biomedical scientist based in the United Kingdom. I'm originally from Nigeria. I share about how you can relocate to the United Kingdom as a biomedical scientist or a medical laboratory scientist. I also talk about what I get to do, what my day looks like as a biomedical scientist here in the United Kingdom. I share tips on how you can write your application and some other tips that can be helpful or useful to you in your application. Please guys, if you are here to do this, subscribe to my channel, share my videos, like my video and leave me a comment in the comment section below. If you are here to do this, please turn on the bell notification icon so that you will be duly notified each time a new video so let's go straight into this video i hope you enjoyed today's video thank you guys yeah in today's video i will be um giving some tips to help you firstly i want to um say this if you're in the united kingdom and um you're a medical laboratory scientist from your own country and you're in the united kingdom maybe doing your msc yeah um, i would advise you do this if you are yet to have your ACPC registration, of course, try to get your ACPC registration sorted. If you have it as you are as you are you know, trying to like um, work on your studies and all of that, while applying for my medical sciences role, you can also apply for MLA roles. That's medical laboratory assistant roles. So why I'm saying this is because MLA yeah they do so many things as well of course they might not have access to do some things but they do the basic things and it's if you if you can get a job as an mla maybe as, as a student you get a part-time job i feel like it will give you the necessary uk experience you need yeah why you look out for a bms role to towards the end of your um studies please try try as much as possible to start searching for jobs maybe like around actively around five months to the end of your studies yes and because the, the recruitment process sometimes takes as long as four to five months before you even eventually start your work so please try that and you don't have to like look for a job just within your vicinity you can look outside your area if for example maybe you are staying in nottingham or Manchester or whatever you can look for jobs in any other part of the UK of England or any other part of the UK you can look for jobs in Scotland Wales or Northern Ireland so don't limit yourself such that once you're able to like get interview invites you go for your interview you, your target is just to get a job that will offer you sponsorship before the end of your studies but and um, the reason I was talking about mainly rules is just for you to get the needed experience that would also boost your CV. So that's my advice for my guys doing their, their MSc. And I really wish you guys the best in your studies. Those of you that have started applying for jobs, I really pray that you get the job. I understand the fact that looking for part-time roles, you'll be trying to look for jobs in your area. That's the issue. You might like you. You'll be trying to target areas that are close to your school. I understand that. You can also try volunteering roles. Maybe you just go to the uh, manager's trust near you and see if they will allow you to volunteer as a um, to volunteer in the lab. The goal is just to get something done in the lab. And if you can't get that, just find a way of getting a job in the NHS. I learned that getting an NHS role, whichever role you get, kind of boosts your CV. So guys, I wish you the best. Ensure that you use all the tips I've uh, mentioned in my channel on how to write your application and all of that. I believe those tips will help you. Yes. So, um, another thing I will be saying in this on um, today is, a day in my life like what i do okay you know in previous videos i tell you uh, what i mean i mentioned that when i get to work um we do some housekeeping jobs yes we, we, we tend to maintain our analyzers now i'll be doing i'll be saying this um with the mindset of answering like an interview question one of the reasons you like have to maintain your analyzer you want to be sure that you are producing 
a result that is as true and as close to the true value like you want to make sure that your result is accurate so that even if they take that same sample to any other laboratory you are getting almost the same result of course we all know as medical laboratory scientists you can't get the same exact the same result but there's there's a like measure of uncertainty rather like there's a range of even if you don't get this your result should not be beyond this and this you understand so you want to be sure your your analyzers are functioning properly yes you want to be sure that the reagents that are um attached to the analyzer or the reagents on board you want to be ensure that they are scanned like the lot number on that reagent is the same as lot number that is on the ipu attached to the analyzer ipu i mean information processing units like the monitor attached to the analyzer you want to be sure that because sometimes maybe when you get a new batch of reagents you maybe if you're not careful not enough you might not like install change the lot number and it might end up giving you issues so you want to be sure that you are doing all of this and <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> one thing we do here each time we get a new reagent we don't just start using it like that we verify the reagent like each if an analyzer is using 10 reagents we verify each reagent the, this is how we do the verification we install the reagent into the analyzer and we run a control so once the QC passes, you are sure that, okay, this reagent is functioning well. Even a new QC, like it has to be, you have to run, if you get a new QC, but you have to run it before the present QC you are working with finishes. Because you want to be sure that, okay, the new QC batch you are getting is also working fine. So you want to maintain your, your your analyzers properly because the goal is you know qms now it's not about the patients it starts with the patients and ends with the patients you want to be sure that you're producing a result that is accurate yes you want to ensure that so yeah you maintain your analyzer and maybe while um sometimes during the day's activities your analyzer can break down it can it can so most of the time once there's an issue most analyzers it gives you an alarm and gives a prompt on what to do so just follow the instruction do what the analyzer tells you to do and yes sometimes what it tells you to do is also written on the sop you can go and check the sop so that you know what to do so this is just so that you troubleshoot it appropriately like don't ignore any alarm if you keep on ignoring alarm <laughs> When the analyzer now breaks down, it might give you more issues and you might end up not being able to use it until maybe the engineer comes over to fix it up. So you want to be sure of that. Another thing is, they might tell you like, okay, when you get a new um, batch of QC or like if you want to each time, because the QC has a viability. Like I work in the hematology lab and our QC works for seven days. Of course, it might finish before that seven day period. You want to ensure that each time you are picking out a new vial, like I mean a new bottle, a new QC, you need to show and um, install it on the IPU that okay, this is a new vial. So that maybe if there's any form of trend or bias as they are looking through, as they are reviewing the QC each day you can know that okay i think the problem is with is with this particular vibe or is with all of the qc batch if that makes sense yeah so guys i'll be telling you this i started doing primary verification as i started doing that so our assessment analyzer it does a form of automatic validation so if for example the result is okay and comparing it with like the system has been fixed like you get comparing that results with the patient's previous result and all of that if everything is okay if there's no abnormal results the results are just directly sent to the doctor's back you get there's an automatic system the result goes back to them but if there's any flag maybe there's an abnormal um um plot there's an abnormal result even if it's by one or zero point one or whatever the analyzer will flag it and that particular result will be up for verification so if for example you have a flag maybe you have a patient's result and you have an a platelet 
um, an abnormal platelet flag or you have maybe on the flag it says platelet clot or anything the first thing you want to do is to pick up that sample you check up where the sample is located pick up the sample and you manually check for clots now so if you have a question you can have an interview question telling you maybe if you have a platelet result and maybe when you see the value you see that it's low what will you do yeah maybe you're getting a platelet result of 150 or 100 or 85 what will you do you pick up that sample and something like a um do you know this applicator stick yes you can put dip it into the blood mix the sample well first dip it into the blood and check out for clots sometimes you discover that the sample is clotted that is why the platelet value is low and once you have that kind of result you will just put on a comment on the laboratory information management system that the um platelet the sample is clotted so there's a way like you will delete all the results and it, once the doctor sees that, once they see it at their end in the ward, they know that they need to send another sample. Sometimes you check for the clot and there's no clot in the sample. So what do you do next? You make a film. Of course, if it's an interview, you tell them you follow what the SOP says. I've done the first thing the SOP says. I need to like check for clots manually. After checking for clots, and I need to like make a film to be sure, especially if it is the first time. Maybe it's the first time the patient is having such a low result. It's not every time you may take an action. But of course, once you have a low platelet count, even if it's, a, if it's the hundredth time, it's very, very, it makes more sense when you check out for clots. Now, you might not make, need to make film all the time. But if, for example, checking the patient's previous result, that's the first time that patient is having that low platelet count, or the first time in a long time, then you need to make a film. So be sure that truly there's um pre presence of low platelets on the film she you get so you need to do that if for example you're having low hb you can just tell them because you can see a lot of values you can just say that okay in your own lab if the hb is below 80 we have to phone the results so phoning the results is like you call there's a each patient like you see the word where the patient is so I like call the world to inform them that you have a particular patient who has a low HP and you just want to let them know. So if there's anything they need to do, they will do. See, even if you call, they will still get those results. But you're just calling to like tell them on time. Maybe it's something that is it's something they really need to work on on time. You get every result still gets back to them. But you're just phoning them to just maybe make them work on that patient on time. You get yeah so because they end up getting to see the results but of course it's not only result they are checking they're checking for the how the patient is responding responding to drugs and all of that so they might not even see the results they might not check the result as a when you feel they should so you need to like inform them so or you're having a hp that is below 70. Like in my lab, if you have a little bit below 70, you need to make a blood film. You need to be sure that that's the result of the patient. Now, if you ask the question, like if you have an analyzer flag um, for maybe the, the analyzer is flagging your MCV, MCET and all of that. Now, sometimes the analyzer can flag the result because sometimes the sample might not even belong to the patient. So once the analyzer flags the result, like something is wrong with the red cell indices, sometimes you just check the previous results. Okay, maybe it's similar. Maybe it's similar. You know that. Okay, most likely that might be the patient's result. But you don't end at that. You might need to check the volume of the sample. Sometimes when the volume is low, it gives um um. You know the sample is diluted, of course. So that means the red cell indices cannot be correct. So you might need to put on a, um, a a comment that you discover that the blood sample is low, and of course the red cell indices will be dis will be deleted on that result. Yes, sometimes when you check, you still find that the volume is okay. You check the sample again that is is not another patient sample and all of that. You just indicate that you've done the patient's identification and it's still the patient sample you have on there. 
So yeah, so one thing I've just discovered that when you are doing verification, like your eyes must be sharp and you must think fast. Of course, it's not like you will not overthink fast. If you are starting, you, are, you might not be as fast as people who have been doing it for long, but you might you must be able to think fast and think because you have a lot of of course you have the SOP with you, but you can imagine checking the SOP every time, although you are expected to check, but with time you get to even know some things you should do. Offhand, you know that if your neutrophil is below 3.0, you make a film. You know that if your sorry, if your WBC rather is below 3.0, you make a film. If your neutrophil is below 1.5, you make a film. If your neutrophil is below 1.0, you phone the word. You get so you, you just get to like know a lot of things and it helps you. Yeah, so that's the new updates for now i started phoning out results if i need to and i've started doing primary verification and it has been interesting yeah so and i've told giving you some tips on what when um, why we do primary verification the reason we do verification we really need to be sure that the result the analyzer has produced is true so and you put so many things in factor in place you need to check has this patient been transfused okay the patient has been transfused oh that's why the platelet is low is, is a bit low okay yeah the patient has been transfused that's why the hb is a bit higher than what it is it was before okay okay and if you check the patient's clinical details you check the pre patient's previous results and all of that so you can see that biomedical science role is very interesting it's what you will enjoy and you will not regret coming to the uk to do so guys i'll be ending today's video with this and i hope to see you in my next one ah before i end the video i have inspiration for christmas in your head hope you guys are praying for christmas hope you have gotten your christmas jumper don't mind me hope you are praying for christmas yeah so i hope you enjoy um the rest of the week i hope you enjoy the rest of please if you are here to do this subscribe to my channel share my videos like my videos and leave me a comment in the comment section below yeah it's for now it's a bye from a girl and i'm Kavlabi. bye